Welcome to Circuit 42. Circuit 42. The one-stop location for all things geek. This episode is brought to you by our sponsors, Dragon's Lair San Antonio and Gotham Newsstand. Sit back, relax, and most importantly, enjoy another episode of Circuit 42. Circuit 42. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Super Circuit World. My name is Ian McIntosh, your host for the evening, and I am here with special guest Kumiko Ogawa. Hi. Hi, my name is Kumi. <laughs> for those, Thank you for inviting. You're welcome. For those who don't know, straight off the bat, who are you and what do you do? Uh, we have the uh, motion capture studio in uh, Marina del Rey in Los Angeles, and then uh, I'm a producer there. And then the uh, most of the project that we worked uh, before is the video games. So, what like what like what are some of the games you worked on? How did you first get your start in the industry? Uh, actually, when I when I first got into this industry, I was the web designer. I was hired as a web designer, and then I started. Um, I got into like a small company, and then um, they had a, a really good connection with a Japanese client, and then so that uh, we started like casting and then put everything on the website, and then that's how we how I started it. But then like uh, when we got the uh, Resident Evil Five, uh, we needed like you know production people on on the project. That's when I you know shift my you know, what I was doing. So, um, yeah, Resident Evil 5, 6, uh, Devil May Cry. Yeah, those. <laughs> I don't know if you know the titles, but, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually a huge Devil May Cry fan. I'm kind of, kind of hot and cold on Resident I'm kind of hot and cold on Resident Evil, but I did grow up on it. Mm -hmm. um, but the one... The one you worked on that I'm actually the the two games that you worked on in different aspects that I'm a huge fan of, uh, Bayonetta, yeah. and um, recently I just finished playing Until Dawn. Oh, nice, cool. How did you like it? Oh, it was awesome. Um, me and my me and my girlfriend are basically treating it like a scary movie. Like the first time uh, we went through, I played it, and she basically watched it like a movie, and mm -hmm. now she's going to play through it, and I'm going to be the audience for it. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna hear how you, how you like it though. <laughs> um, I screamed a lot. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. The 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 parts where you have to hold the control still. Mhm. Mm the that was that was intense. Um. Um. I, I mean that all the all the colors and then everything how the story you know the um like carry to you know then like, it's it's all like. It was so scary to me too. <laughs> the atmosphere was just great. Like I know. yeah, that tells like a lot of you know a lot of it. Yeah, you know, me yeah. Yeah, because you can have a game of great mechanics, but if you're trying, especially in a horror game or like a sci-fi game, if you're yeah. trying to carry that across and you don't have that atmosphere to it, you're mm -hmm. going to lose something. Like no matter how good the core mechanics might be. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, um, from my, from what I've read, the research I've done, you worked in a performance capture on the game. Now, for those who don't know, what exactly is that? Like, what part did you play in the creation of the game? Uh, on the on the project. Uh huh. Um, actually, when we get the project from the client, um, we we usually you know get the script from the client and then uh, to create all the um, character breakdown and a scene breakdown, you know to see how many days we need for the motion capture or the ADR, you know like voice recording sessions, yeah. and create the budget and the schedule and then hire all the crews or sometimes like you know, when uh, when the client asks we um, we uh, hold the casting as well. You know, because, like, you know, we know a lot of, like, um, people in the industry, and like, it's easier for um, as compared to the client who is in Japan to, you know, contact to uh, to the actor in the U.S., you know, so that we hold the casting, and then, and and then, yeah, that's that's pretty much, that's much it, you know. Well, with, with this game in particular, I mean, obviously, for those who played it, you know, it's, it's kind of a... Um... 
I, I, I am not, I am, I'm probably going to step on somebody's toes if they listen to this. I'm not a big fan of uh, David Cage and his term interactive drama. Mm-hmm. But I could actually, unlike most of the games that David Cage has worked on, I could actually coin that term for this. While it's a horror film, the whole interact, the, it's where like, it's not quite an interactive movie, of course, but it's hard to exactly describe the game and the way it worked. Now, it's, from what I'm from what I'm looking at, looking at the game compared to others, especially with a lot of the uh, actors having a film having a film background, mm-hmm. uh, how was the process? How was the process of this similar and different to other games you worked on? Hmm. Because it's definitely a unique game. Yeah, but um, hmm. uh, the when we when we actually. Um, you know, like in the motion capture, you don't really see that, you know, like the uh, environment, you know, yeah. you, right? Of course. Like there, is, there are lots of lots of, like you know, imagination that um, the actor requires to, you know, to have this have that kind of skill, right? Mm-hmm. So that, um, so we usually when we um, it goes back to the casting session actually, and then when we do the casting, we um. We try to get somebody from the uh, somebody who has the theater background, because like sometimes like um, in the um, when we capture the motion and then put it into the the CZ character, you can't really see the movement of the body like so that you know compared to the live action, because like you know all the all the acting is you know um, it's played in the frame right? Yeah. So that you know, you can see all the um, you can see pretty much you can tell everything pretty much like you know from what you see on the frame in the live action. But then like you know, when it comes to like CZ, you know, you have to like exaggerate your movement sometimes. Yeah. Like it's better for us to like to look for somebody who has the the theater background. That that helps a lot. Now, so. with what with what you've done, something I've always wondered is I know some actors. Yeah, you know, there are definitely some actors um, that have trouble really working against them, working against like a blue screen, green screen, et cetera, in a digital environment. Like, mm-hmm. perfect example, um, the uh, Star Wars prequels, where you could tell that like you and McGregor, for example, seemed to be very natural while doing it. But then you had somebody who maybe was less experienced, like uh, Hayden Christensen or even Natalie Portman, who it mm-hmm. seemed like they were so not used to that kind of film environment that it just, that the whole performance just kind of suffered for it. Have you ever had any actors who have just, you know, tried to do the uh, mocap work and just were not comfortable with it? No. And what, and was there anything that you did to try to help them, help direct them and show them what to do in that environment? I mean, um, He, uh, to help the actor to imagine what you know where they are, we usually uh, prepare the CG environment that they we can pull on the monitor, so that at least you know they can see what kind of environment they're in. You know, because like you know, only you see on the set is like you know the wooden frame, or you know, like you don't you don't really see you know anything. Yeah. So like by by that for. You know, so like we prepare the like, image of of the uh, the scene, or you know, like props that you know they're holding, or something like that. You know, that helps. That yeah. So, question: You've worked in you've worked in many different. You've worked through your studio. You've worked through a lot of different areas. Um, is there anything in particular? Is there anything in particular that you like doing above all else when it comes to what you do? Where is that? I'm sorry, it, it got cut out. Well, with um, uh, working working in mo- working with uh, mocap of various different games, et cetera, different areas of that, mm-hmm. uh, between like between like audio, vo- uh, voice work, mocap, is mm-hmm. there any particular favorite thing that you like to do? Hmm. I mean, that all the steps that I that I've been doing is pretty unique, and then it's it's really fun, so that um. So whatever, whatever I do on the project, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always having fun. So like, it, it, I can't. Re- it's really hard to decide. Like, you know, say, 
which one you know is my favorite doing it like because like all the ask you know all the things that I do that I've done is like you know voiceover you know working with the voiceover actor in a uh, voiceover session so so fun like you know they have they're so talented you know so like it's it's all it's all different and then I'm having you know fun all the time yeah now yeah. how long have you been now how long have you been working in video games just out of curiosity uh I think it's about what 10 years and what was the um now you mentioned um Resident Evil 5 was that the first was that the first game that you worked on or was there anything prior to that I think the first project that I worked on was the uh, Devil May Cry 3.5, which was the special e edition. Oh yeah, I remember that game. It's the yeah. it's the game where you where it's like, hey, this game is awesome, dead. This game is <laughs> awesome, dead. Can, can can I can I survive? Would you like to play in easy mode? No, <laughs> you keep killing me. I try to um I try to finish that video game but then like I couldn't I went I went up to like 20 no 20 missions or something and then I couldn't I couldn't finish <laughs> it's like she worked on the game and she couldn't finish it so everyone who keeps dying just now, now you feel yeah. a little bit about a little bit better about yourself yeah I know it was so hard like it, I wasn't I wasn't a gamer and then so like it was like you know trying to get you know, I, I tried the um, the tutorial and then tried to get used to, like, all the buttons and everything. But, and then I, you know, I started liking it, but then, like, and I, I just couldn't finish it. <laughs> you know, it was too hard for me. <laughs> so, uh, with that, I want to ask a little bit about the history of your, uh, of, your motion, of, the motion, of your motion capture studio and how that kind of came apart, came apart, came about, mm -hmm. sorry. Because uh, you worked for, did you work for or start um, Rouge Mocap? I was a little bit, I was doing some research, but I was a little bit confused on that. Oh, what do you, what do you, hmm. With, uh, with the uh, Mocap studio that you work for, it's kind of the history of it, uh, and how you, you know, how the studio kind of came about with the projects that they worked on. Huh. Um, like, uh, when we... When we did the Resident Evil Five, we actually shot everything, um, everything at the at different states, right? And then like, um, and um, the, all the voiceover session was done in the, um, the another uh, sound uh, sound studio. And then after that, you know, by having all the experience working on it, um, uh, we uh, our my former um, the company's present uh, owner who um, who was like why don't we start you know the studio by ourselves again because like you know we have you know we have so many experience working on you know the the motion capture and animation and then video you know voice voiceover recording and then so that that's that's when um, the the company decided to build the stage. Now. So, yeah. Wow, when you built the stage and built the uh, studio, like what was? Do you remember what the first project that you guys officially worked on under the studio? That was the Resident Evil Six. Awesome. And um, yeah. I know. Um, now, and sorry, I just lost my words. That's <laughs> 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 It's kind of uh, it's kind of interesting because I know with games like. With games like something like Destiny or something like Mirror's Edge, just definitely seems like it would be a different project in terms of Resident, in terms of something like Resident Evil or Until Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, what as what aspects did you work on that, and how did you approach that project? Oh no, which one, Resident Evil Six or? Well, or something like uh, Destiny or Mirror's Edge, since that's definitely uh, uh, uniquely Des different. Destiny actually, we we only worked on um, on that project for the the trailer. Okay. So yeah, it wasn't the whole entire part of the pro, you know, the video game. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like you know, it's it's pretty much the same that you know, it, it's the motion capture. So that if we if we know what to capture, it's all the it's all the same, and then you know, so. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry about this. I'm I've only 
I've only really I like I've been a, I've been a gamer for a while. I've done I've done a lot of reading on mocap, but really until recently, like talking with you and talking with um, uh, another guest we had on the show, who I believe you're friends with, uh, Mark Morisu. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, only until then have I really gotten a lot more insight into that. Now, there's a project that you're working that you worked on called uh, Sep called Sepiku. Ah, oh, how did you know that? <laughs> Sure? Yeah, um, we <laughs> we actually um, um, yeah, I actually worked on that project as a producer. Um, and we had like three producers on that project. That that's the short uh, short film, and then it's the it's the journey of the um, Japanese American athlete, you know, um, the who you know who is struggled by like. Um, is she like she she looks like Japanese, but then like she she was born in you know U.S. So like she's like she she wants to be treated as American, but then like you know it's because of you know by you know her look you know she is treated by like you know who am I you, you know like trying to find identity. Yeah. It's yeah. So that was the the story. I mean that was the the film that I worked on, and then um, it's going to the uh, some film festival. And then I'm I'm very looking forward to it. <laughs> and it's it's definitely something that it's one of the it's one of those things where something like this, it shouldn't yeah. it's something like this shouldn't like should not be relevant. And it's kind of sad that 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 a subject like this is so unfortunately as relevant as it is. Yeah. Now, um, for any what like what kind of projects do you have coming up? That people uh, be interested in. Ah, <laughs> the project that we're we are actually working on the two, three, three, three projects right now. One is uh, the voiceover recording, and then two uh, video games. But uh, um, we can actually tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Eh, not a problem. Uh, yeah, but it's it's been really fun. Now, uh, for you, like looking at the work that you've done. Uh, what game or what film pro or what film project just stands out? Just really stands out for you, one that you just, you know, that one that you just really kind of dug into when you were working on. You mean you mean the project that that I worked on? Yeah. Or... Like different projects that you worked on. Um, yeah. Before with and within and outside of your studio. Hmm. I mean that. Hmm. I mean, the Resident Evil 5 and 6 was like, you know, or the pretty epic, you know, in my life. It's because, like, it was, like, my, it was the project that I, you know, my, I, I shift my, what I, shift what I was doing from the web designer. And I learned a lot from, since that project. So that, you know, that was the, the, one of the best projects that I've worked on. Yeah, you can't. Um, yeah, and then the, since then, the, all the you know, pretty much all the project has like you know, has their own. It's like you know, fun memory, the stories, experience. So like, it's it's all fun. But uh, yeah, that was the those two projects was my my favorite project that I have worked on. And it's gotta be that's gotta be a heck of a way to really to really start your career, to really start your career in this area. I mean. Everybody knows Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful that, you know, that I had um, the experience working on those projects because, like, a lot of people knows that, you know, and then notice, like, you know, it's Resident Evil, you know. So I'm so, I'm so thankful. Now, as far as, because um, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned that every project that you've worked on has some kind of great moment that you really love. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any particular story, anything that stands out that you that you would want to discuss on here? Like just something that happened while you were working on one of these projects. Um, while okay, um, hmm. on the Resident Evil Six, we were we were actually when we started this project, we were still like building the studio, and then it's because like we worked um we um we actually did whole thing like you know. Like um, 
creating like storyboards like and then um, like shooting the video storyboards before the motion capture shoot right so like um, so like while we're still building a stage motion capture stage we had to shoot like you know video storyboard too so like that all the you know people were working so late <laughs> and then, you know but then like we were so excited to have our own studio and then you know after the everything is like built you know and then we're ready for the the shoot for the motion capture you know day one it was so like everybody was so happy and then you know we, we loved it loved that the moment see it's it's gonna be awesome to have that because when you're that enthusiastic about what you're doing at the time yeah you only realize how nervous you actually were after, yeah, <laughs> not Yeah, we were like, oh my god, is this gonna be done? You know, on time? You know, and like, is this gonna be ready? Oh no! <laughs> you know, it's like, it happens a lot, but then like you know, we made it happen, and then yeah, so. <laughs> but like I said, that's a great part about having that enthusiasm because you kind of every yeah. every, every bit of panic and nervousness kind of beca- kind of only comes in at the end instead of right at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the fun part of the the production, actually. You know, that yeah. the project have you know has some like you know problem or the you know fun part, you know, excitement and then all that. You know, so definitely. Now, like looking back at what you first what you started with and looking at now, um, mm-hmm. how would you describe yourself when you started when you started working as opposed to now, and what do you think you've learned? Um, mm, it's it's so hard to tell. It's I learned a lot. I learned so much. Like, um, because like I never thought of being, you know, the you know becoming like a producer on like video game project because like you know I was hired as a web designer. You know, you know looking at the coding and all that stuff. All the you know all day, you know, that's, I thought that's what I was going to be doing, you know, entire my life. But uh, I learned, like, how to deal with people, like, you know, how to create the budget and then how to deal, you know, how to juggle the, the budget, you know, and then, like, scheduling, you know, handling all the, all the assets. It's, and then, it's pretty much like, um, I'm so like grateful and thankful that that I had a you know experience like working on those like video game project you know and then overseeing uh, all the the from the beginning to the end like you know breaking down the script and then you know the looking at the how how the uh, virtual camera is made and then animation and all those steps. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, is there anything else that you want? Is there anything else that you want to discuss or talk about uh, before we brought the show to a close? Um, it's all you. This is your show. <laughs> oh my god! We're, we're just the hosts. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my god! Um, I love, I really love working on the video game project, but uh, um, I also am looking for, like, you know, the, um, my dream is to, like, produce a hybrid, you know, type feature film combining, like, computer graphics and the live action, like, you know, like, how they did, like, Avatar or the Apes, you know, I kind of, you know, wanted to get into that, you know, the field as well, so... You know, by then, you know, I keep working on it, on, you know, what I do, and then, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's my dream, actually. <laughs> do you have, now, question, if you had, like, the budget, just everything you needed to make the movie right now, mm-hmm. do you know what your movie would be about, or is this kind of just something that you're, that you're just always had in your head? I don't, I don't have it yet, but uh, that's. I don't know what's gonna be what what kind of movie it you know it's gonna be, but then like that's that's what I want to do, and then that's that's stuck in my head all the time. Awesome. Yeah. 
Now, um, on this wonderful on this place, this wonderful, wonderful place on the called the internet, where can people find you and your work? Where? Yeah, where on the internet can people find your work, get in contact with you, check out what you do, and maybe hire and maybe hire you on for something awesome? Uh. If um if they can go to like uh, rosemocap.com, they can see our um the the company info and then they can actually uh the if, if they can send send us the email that actually connects me so. Awesome and with yeah. that with, and I guess with that we'll bring the newest episode of Super Circuit World to a close. Uh, All right. Thank you again for coming on. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you so much. Y'all have a wonderful night, everybody. Keep playing video games and keep <laughs> buying video games. Don't pirate video games because we'll be very upset with you. So go back to whatever you were doing before you started listening to this show. You have a wonderful night. You've been listening to Circuit 42, brought to you by Dragon's Lair San Antonio and Gotham Newsstand. Join us for our next episode for all things geek. Circuit 42.